Kia ora and welcome to part four of this tutorial series. Uh, last time we ended up here and we have our house models, our light, our floor and our ball to catch our reflections. Now we're going to set up our render passes. Uh, I hope that I can explain this simply. I hope that it makes sense and um, let's dive into it and I'll go through it step by step. The first thing we probably want to do is organize ourselves a little bit. So we have our houses in our collection. We're going to name this foreground. And our foreground is just going to be our houses without any of the bells and whistles like the shadows or reflections. So let's, uh, let's move this out because that's going to be a shadow capture and a reflection capture. So I'm going to hit M, move this to a new collection that I'm going to call shadow shadow and let's also rename it shadow now what we can do with this is in our uh, object properties we'll go to visibility and enable shadow catch I'm sure this is a step that pretty much everyone should be familiar with I'm also going to delete this empty since we don't need it anymore so we've got our foreground layer in a collection. We've got our shadow layer in a collection. Now we need uh, two more. So let's create a new one. Let's create it in there. And we'll call this one Reflection Direct. And we'll create one more, which we will call Reflection in direct. Let me explain this quickly. In our reflection direct layer, we're going to be capturing the reflections from this point light. Now this point this point light is going to bounce once on the ground and then into the camera. And that's what makes it direct. It's one bounce off the floor into the camera. Our indirect collection is going to capture the light that has two bounces. So for example, we can see the light is bouncing once onto the house, and then it's going to bounce off the house onto the floor, which is our second bounce, and then it's going to bounce into the camera. So direct, one bounce, indirect, two bounces. So that's what we're setting up here. So in our direct, we need uh, to put in another floor because that's that's what's going to be catching this. So let's take our floor, let's shift D to create a copy of it, and then we'll move that copy to our reflection direct layer. And let's call this reflection direct. And what we'll do with that is we will turn off the shadow catch. Right, and that doesn't show up because the shadow is in the same place and blocking it. And if we turn that off and on again, it shows up. Uh, we also need this in our reflection indirect. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to shift D again. I'm going to move it to our reflection indirect and rename it to reflection indirect. Uh, what else would we need in our reflection indirect? Well, also our uh, bowl here because the light from our HCRI is hitting this building and then it's bouncing off the building and hitting the bowl and then it's bouncing into the camera so that's again two bounces of light so we're gonna take our ball and we're gonna move it to our reflection indirect layer and let's rename it bowl since we've come this far with the naming conventions okay so that's looking Good. Now we need to tell Blender how to process each of these layers. And we do that with view layers. So view layers will tell us what to enable in each layer and what to disable in each layer. So we'll first of all create a new view layer. This one, we will follow our structure here and we'll call it foreground. Now this is how we tell Blender um, what to do with these view layers. We're going to go up here to filter and we're going to toggle on this indirect only option and that's going to allow us to tell uh, Blender for example 
in this foreground layer, I'm going to make the shadow indirect only. And that's going to tell Blender not to render the shadow in this layer. It's only going to be any effects that the shadow indirectly has on the models that are in our foreground composition. So with our foreground view layer, we can select all of these, everything except the foreground, and make them indirect. And yes, even the reflection direct needs to be indirect. So that way we can see now we only have these two buildings showing up. We don't have any reflections, we don't have any shadows. And that is what we want. Let's create a, another view layer now where we can add some of that back in. Let's call this one shadow. And now our foreground will be indirect because we don't want to render any of our foreground elements. We only want it to render the shadows that they are casting on the ground. So let's make our foreground indirect. And this is important because we have sub collections in here. We need to actually, um, unfortunately, go in and enable this for all of the subfolders as well. Okay, and then we can see that our houses disappear and we just have our shadows. And let's also make these uh, reflection captures indirect as well. So now we just have our shadow. Does that make sense? With our foreground, everything is indirect except our foreground. And with our shadow, everything is indirect except our shadow. So let's keep going. Let's add a new view layer. And let's call this reflection direct. Okay. And same sort of thing. We want to come to our foreground and check all of these indirect tags. We want to go to our shadow and check that. And let's just turn off our reflection indirect altogether. Let's not worry about it for this. Okay, there's a couple more things we need to do when we get to this stage. So it's all set up, but we've got to go to our render passes. Because at the moment it's going to render this and that's not what we want. So we need to go down to our render passes and we need to enable uh, glossy direct. And if we go up here to our render pass, we can actually look at that. So we can click on our glossy direct and you can see now we just have the reflections. The problem is we also have the reflections of our world, which we don't want. We just want our light here. So in our render passes tab, if we go down to filter, we can turn off our environment. And now you can see we just have that light that is being cast onto our floor. And that is exactly what we want. Let's give this a save and move on to our last render layer. I'm going to add a new view layer here. And this one, as you have probably guessed, I'm going to call reflection indirect. And in this one, go. let's set it to glossy indirect so that we can see what it's going to look like. Let's uh, set all of our foreground elements to indirect. How many times can I say indirect in this tutorial? Someone count, put it in the comments. Let's set our shadow to be indirect. And let's set our direct. Let's just turn that off. Okay. Now, the only other thing we're going to do with our reflection indirect view layer is again similar to with our direct view layer. We're going to come here into our render passes. And we're going to make sure that we select glossy indirect. And now, we can see we have just our uh, <clears throat> our indirect lighting. There's a few things that we need to fix up, though. Okay, so first of all, uh, we don't want this reflecting on here. So let's select our ball. Let's go to our object properties, and we're going to turn off glossy. So that's going to stop it from reflecting in other objects. Also turn off shadow, since we don't want it to cast a shadow. And now we have just uh, the reflection in the ball. What we can also do at this point is um, for our indirect layer, we can actually scale this down on the x-axis. 
this is definitely a cheat. I'm not denying that. But we can scale this down on the x-axis and move it over <clears throat> so that we're seeing our whole ball there since I uh, was too lazy to match this ball up perfectly. Now another thing we're doing is we're also getting kind of some extra extra light that we don't really want here. So I'm going to uh, do another cheat. I'm going to go to edit mode, my materials. I'm going to add a new material and this material I'm just going to make it black with full roughness and if we go to rendered view we can see the reflections that we want which is kind of this area so I'm just going to select these vertices here and assign those with our reflective material and then I'm going to invert that selection and assign the inverted selection to our other material which is black have a look at that I've also disabled our shadow layer rather than making it indirect and now we have just the part that we want reflecting in here again a cheat but I figured I'd show you how I might cheat because cheating is totally acceptable another thing I quickly want to mention um, earlier when we created our wood material we added this roughness map and what we didn't do that you would normally do is you would change this to non-color but for some reason and I don't truly know why that really dampens the uh, the reflection probably actually makes it more accurate to, to how that wood would reflect but in this case uh, because I want the reflection to be a little bit more obvious I'm going to leave that at sRGB just so that it shows up a little bit more clearly for the, the purposes of this sorry this is long-winded but we're, we're getting there so I'm just gonna go back to our main view layer so that we can see everything and that is the purpose of this view layer it's just uh, so that we can we can see what we're dealing with here and I'm going to make sure to disable this one because we don't want to render this main view layer here so I'm going to turn off use for rendering and now we are set to export what we need to do is uh, come over here check our render settings so we definitely want to turn on motion blur and any other performance settings that you want to change you can do I'm gonna to go to my advanced uh, noise settings here and I'm going to check this use animated seed so that it generates a new uh, seed of noise with every frame and I'm going to set my render samples to 256 um, and enable denoising denoising. Now we'll go to our output properties, check all of our settings here, and this is this is the key here. If you're unaware of this step, then you're welcome. I've just changed your life forever for the better. So we're going to select our OpenEXR multi-layer as our output format. So what this is going to do is it's going to create one file that has all of our render pass information in it, which is going to make it much easier to work with in After Effects. We only have to import one sequence instead of multiple. Um, so that's that's how we're packaging this. I'm just going to leave everything as default, except I'm going to change this to Dwa lossy, which is going to bring our file size down slightly. And I'm going to choose an output directory. And there we go. We are now ready to render. All right, that's it for render layers. I hope it wasn't too confusing or too boring. Um, and if it was, then I'm sorry. Uh, in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to bring that render into back into After Effects and we're going to composite it in and I'll show you how to divide all the different layers up and yeah, hopefully create something very cool. So I will see you then.